Hi everybody, it's Webby. Welcome back to another video. Today we're having a look at the brand new second generation Hyundai Kona, and this is actually the entry level model. There are three different specifications you can choose from, the base Kona, the premium, or the premium with sunroof. And in all three models, you've got three choices of engines. You can have the two litre petrol, which we've got here today. There's a 1.6 litre hybrid, or you can have a fully electric. They all come with the option of the N-Line package as well. Even on the base model, you can have the N-Line. The thing I really like about what Hyundai have done with the new Kona is there's three different trim levels and three different engines. But you don't have to go for a particular model to get the drivetrain that you want. So this base model, you can get petrol, hybrid, or electric. With some other manufacturers, reserve things like the hybrid or the electric to the top of the range models. I love the way the Hyundai is giving you the option of having any powertrain in any model. So today we're going to have a look at this base model. I'll show you all the features and the facts and figures about this car, and then we'll take it for a drive. And at the end, I'll give my honest opinion on what I think of this new model. So let's get started and have a look at this brand new Hyundai Kona. So starting on the outside then, Hyundai have adopted this kind of single light across the front of the bonnet, which they've started to put in all of their new models these days, even their vans, uh, which is quite cool. Um, you do have to go to a certain specification for the light to go all the way across, because in this model it's only in the corners. Um, but it's nice to see things like even on a basement all front parking sensors. Um, now from the side angle, you've got all these sort of black plastic arches sort of the front and back. Um, that's because this is just a standard model. If you have the inline package, that will become color-coded, uh, and then the styling of the front bumper is also a little bit different as well, so it just gives it a sporty appeal. I do like the fact we've got 18-inch alloy wheel standard on this base model. Um, normally, sort of base models get 16, 17, something like that. Um, but yeah, Hyundai have actually gone with 18-inch wheels on a base model. Now, the styling, as you come down the side of the car, you've got this big crease that goes from the bottom of the driver's door all the way to the top of the rear um, sort of passenger door and it basically looks like a Tucson that's been shrunk in the wash because if you put this side by side with the new Tucson it looks basically just like a smaller version um, and when you get inside you'll see that this has actually grown the new Kona is much bigger than the old one there's much more passenger space inside it feels so much more spacious uh, than the older model um, so as a design I think it's a fantastic looking car so the new Kona actually looks really good from the back as well um, what you'll first see also is this chrome line that comes all the way along the windows on the side doors that comes all the way up the side pillar to this chrome section on top of the rear spoiler which I actually think is quite a good look um, stands out particularly if you've got a darker coloured car this one is actually called Mirage Green I thought it was grey when I picked it up but um, yeah, who knew it was green anyway, coming around to the back we've got this single strip LED light which goes all the way from one side to the other uh, it looks really cool at night, actually. Um, the boot is manual on this base model, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because you need something to put on the upper models, don't you? Um, the boot size is 407 litres in carry capacity, so a fairly decent size for a small SUV. You can obviously extend that by folding down the rear seats, and then it's almost like having a wagon or an estate car. Underneath the boot floor, it's actually quite nice to see a space saver spare wheel. Because a lot of manufacturers are going for these tyre repair kits these days, which are great in certain situations, but you can't beat anything like an actual wheel, um, even if it is just a space saver like we've got here. Right, so let's talk engine options now then. As I said at the beginning of the video, there's a 2.0 litre petrol, there's a hybrid, and there's also an electric option. Today we're reviewing the 2.0 litre petrol, so let's have a look under the bonnet. Nice to see gas struts even on this basement, so well done again, Lee. Uh, good work on that one. The 2 litre petrol gives 110 kilowatt and 180 newton metres of torque. It's front wheel drive and it's got a CVT gearbox. The fuel rating is rated at 6.6 .6 litres per 100 uh, and it's got a 47 litre fuel tank. Service intervals for this particular engine are every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres uh, and they're capped for the first five years at $399 per service. Warranty is five years and unlimited Ks. Um, which is pretty standard nowadays, everybody seems to be doing that but it's a good package overall from Hyundai on the engine front so that's a bit about the outside and the engine options on this new Kona uh, we're now going to step inside and have a look at this interior which I think you'll be really impressed with if you're enjoying the video, give it a like and share it with your friends so they can see this new Kona as well 
uh, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because I've got a couple of different versions of this car coming in the next few months. Uh, we're going to be looking at the electric version and hopefully the hybrid as well. So let's jump inside and have a look at the inside of the new, this new Kona. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the inside. And let me know your thoughts. Do you think this looks like green or not? Or do you think, like me, it looks a little bit grey? Mirage Green is the official name for the colour of this car. Um, I swear it's grey. Maybe it's just my eyes. Uh, anyway, nice to see things like automatic folding door mirrors. We've got keyless entry, something I definitely didn't expect on an entry-level car. But here we are in 2024. Hyundai are up in their game. Um, the interior is really, really nice. Uh, these seats are super supportive, but also really comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with having cloth seats, because here in Australia, uh, when it gets really hot, you don't want to be sitting on leather seats, that's for sure. Um, one thing is nice to see is we've actually got lumbar support just down here at the bottom of the driver's seat. We've got a manual adjustment. The seats are fully manual. But yeah, it's nice to see an electric lumbar support. But if you look at the inside of the dash, look how big those two screens are. They go from the driver's side all the way across to the infotainment screen. Uh, something we'll be having a look at a little bit closer in a second. But yeah, just that interior is so much different to the old model and so much more space as well. So this is a view from the driver's position then. Uh, nice leather steering wheel in front of us uh, with controls over on the left hand side for the cruise control. Uh, then bits and pieces over here for like phone, volume, uh, etc. And also buttons to operate. Uh, the digital screen that you can see there just in front of the driver. Again, this is another thing that I was quite surprised about, to have a full digital display on an entry-level car. You've got the speedo on the left, you've got the rev counter on the right-hand side, and then in the centre, you've got a smaller screen, which is things like your trip computer and things like that. Um, so yeah, to have that big digital screen on an entry-level car is actually really, really impressive. You then come over to the middle, where we've got the entertainment screen, which is a 12.3 inch screen. Uh, you actually got one Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, which is really, really impressive. Uh, I've actually disconnected my CarPlay just for now because uh, it just mucks up with recording when I'm videoing. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the wireless CarPlay works faultlessly. I can't find anything wrong with how this system is set up, which is much better uh, than systems in older Hyundai's. The thing I really do like, obviously this is sort of very touchscreeny like most things are these days, but it's nice to see we've still got buttons here on the dashboard for some of your basic functions. Not everything is touchscreen, and I particularly love the way we've got proper buttons here for the climate control as well. Uh, so big sort of thumbs up to Hyundai for keeping buttons on the dashboard. Uh, I am a big fan of buttons. I like touchscreens, but some controls really do need to be um, buttons on the dash still. Um, so dual, dual zone climate control is standard again another fantastic inclusion for base model car uh, just below that and in front of the gear stick let's just slide in there so what we've got here then we've got a wireless charging pad there for your mobile phone there's two USB-C which are the fast charging uh, sort of connections to charge your phone uh, which is fantastic to see a lot of cars nowadays are still using the older USB-A the sort of the square design we've also then got push that in you just see there you've got a cigarette lighter style and 12 volt power socket as well so they've got all your options covered for whatever you want to charge uh, in this new Kona uh, then we come back this is my only drawback I really think for this new model um, in this 2 litre petrol engine you get this massive great sort of gear stick in the centre uh, whereas some of the other models um, the hybrid and the electric I think you just get this sort of little dial here um, where some of your buttons are moved up there, and then I think the stalk is actually on the steering wheel to change gear. Um, I'll certainly find out when I get to drive the other models. So that's the only downside for me. It kind of looks a little bit sort of out of place, but uh, by the by, that's not too bad. Uh, we've got a drive mode selector button just here, which is sort of pretty standard stuff. Uh, the auto hold function for the handbrake, uh, button to turn your parking sensors on and off, uh, and then a button there to bring on the camera, which if we have a look at that there, that's actually a pretty clear, um, sort of decent picture from a, a rear camera these days. Uh, you find so many cars where the rear camera is pretty average um, and is a bit blurry and doesn't really show you very much. Uh, so again, that'll be thumbs up to Hyundai for putting a decent camera in the car. And then coming back sort of behind the gear stick, we've got some storage here. I like the way they've done this. You've got two cup holders just here. 
and then either side sort of this little slot here and then down here it's actually quite a good place for putting your phone or something like that and um, so just so it doesn't sort of go flying around uh, inside the car the armrest here lifts up and you've got this little sort of tray there and when you take that out it just goes all the way to the bottom it's not actually enclosed in which i thought was um, a bit of a surprise because when you shut that if i just bring the camera around you just see the bottom of the sort of storage bin there so yeah there's no sort of real cover uh, just there to sort of block everything off uh, you've then also got a little shelf over here just in front of the passenger um, it works to a certain point but if you go around a corner things tend to fall off that shelf um, my partner put a mobile phone on there the other day and when we went around the corner it fell on the floor um, so yeah there's limited use to that uh, then you've got glove box there not the biggest glove box in the world uh, but certainly enough space for things like your books and uh, you know, other bits and pieces there as well um, and then you've got the usual sort of door bin pockets over there um, obviously on the driver's side but the other thing you sort of notice when you look around this is the sort of the quality of the materials has definitely improved um, the fabric on the seats is really really nice um, you do get some sort of hard plastics at the top of the dash but I don't think that really matters no one's really sitting there tapping the dash as they're driving along so the quality of the dashboard materials to me doesn't really matter um, you still get nice sort of softer slide type of plastics here on the door um, you've got the usual sort of window and mirror switches up there as well um, yeah the general overall quality of this car I think is really really nice the steering wheel also nice leather one there as well and there's no Hyundai badge so you're kind of left guessing as to what car you're driving um, yeah and if you stepped in you wouldn't necessarily think this is a Hyundai because um, yeah it's just really nice the other thing my partner pointed out the other day is the dashboard is sort of set quite far back away from the passenger a lot of cars nowadays the dashboards come out sort of all the way to here and encroaches in the passenger space so by the fact that the dashboard is pushed further back into the car creates this sort of big area for sort of passengers to sort of stretch their legs out and rest and um you know just enjoy the journey so yeah interior space of this new kona is much improved over the old model so the driving position on this new kona is really good too uh, you get a great view out the windscreen at the front and the side windows as well we've got blind spot monitor on this base model too and that's something that's really good the safety equipment is fantastic so not only do we get blind spot monitor we've got adaptive cruise control we've got the lane keeping aid seven airbags and so it can move up the game in terms of safety equipment as well now the other nice thing you can get on this new hyundai kona is a thing called blue link so it's an app that you get on your phone that you can remotely control some of the features of the car so you can lock and unlock the doors you can start the engine you can turn on your heating or your air conditioning so when you get in your car it's nice and cool particularly handy here in the summer at the minute in australia where we're having some hot days or sort of 35 36 degree days uh, so to be able to turn on your air conditioning before you get in the car is absolutely fantastic so this is where i'd have my driving position we'll go and have a look in the back now and see how much more space we now get in this new kona for rear passengers So as you can see there, getting in the back of the Kona is really simple. The door opens are nice and wide. You have to duck your head a little bit to get in. It's not too bad. And um, certainly better than some other cars that I've seen. We've actually got a relatively decent amount of headroom as well. But there's acres of space for my legs. And I can even get my feet under the driver's seat as well. So I can actually stretch out on a longer journey. Uh, so make it nice and comfortable when you're driving along. And you actually feel like you're in a bigger car back here. Um, it doesn't feel like a small sort of city size SUV that the old Kona used to be like it's almost like you've then moved up to the next size of SUV um, so yeah it's fantastic that you've got so much space back here it's also nice we've got air vents in the back as well for the air conditioning for rear passengers plus we've also got two USB-C fast charging points uh, so if kids are sat in the back playing on phones or iPads or whatever um, they'll be able to charge their devices as you're driving along as well Rear comfort is actually really, really good. The back seats are just as comfortable as the ones in the front. We've also got this fold-down armrest, which has got a couple of cup holders in it as well. Uh, great for rear passengers. And there's also fixed mounting points for child seats as well, should you need to put a baby seat in the back. And there's enough space back here that I think you could actually fit three adults as well. 
not necessarily people that are six foot five, you wouldn't get three of those in the back, but certainly three people my size, five foot six, teenagers. Um, so it's a genuine family car, this new Kona. Um, so put it on your shopping list if you're looking for a new small to medium size SUV. All right, so time to take the Kona for a drive and see what it's all about uh, and give you my thoughts on how she's like right on the open road. First thing you do actually notice in this new Kona is that it's a lot quieter inside and it feels like a bigger car to drive. It just feels a bit more sort of grown up. Um, yeah, like it's sort of matured a bit, if you like. The ride quality is definitely better than the outgoing model. It is bigger, um, which obviously does help with that. But yeah, it just feels a much nicer car to drive. It's quiet, it's smooth, the steering is nice visibility is great there's not really much to complain about with this new Kona the engine does feel a little bit underpowered sometimes it's like you put your foot down there's not really much going on there in terms of power delivery so it could do with a little bit more power hopefully soon I'm going to get to drive the hybrid and electric models as well so that may sort of solve that problem but as an actual thing to drive and be driven around in, I have to say I'm really, really impressed with this new Kona. I think one of my favourite features is that the sun visor obviously folds to the side as normal, but it also extends as well. So you just get that sort of bit that normally gets missed on most cars. It extends all the way to the back of the window and the driver's side. You do get the feeling of being in a bigger car in this new Kona. You'd say it definitely feels a lot more grown up than the older model. And it would almost make you question why you'd need to go to anything bigger. Because it really does everything you need it to do. It'd be easy to park as well because it's not quite as big as some of the mid um, sort of mid-size SUVs. So it kind of almost makes it the perfect package for a small to medium size SUV. I don't know really got a good job with the suspension too. Um, it's no sports car go man corners, but it certainly holds its own. It's lovely and comfortable to drive in. Um, you now you could do a long journey in this car, get out the other end, and still feel pretty comfortable, I reckon. The engine is relatively quiet, uh, helped in much by that CVT gearbox. But if you put your foot down quite hard to, um, you know, to get it to go somewhere, it does sound quite noisy and a little bit sort of overworked, if you like. Um, but generally, just popping around town, it's nice and quiet, it's smooth, the gearbox is lovely. But yeah, if you want something with a bit more performance, you'd have to go to probably the electric one, I reckon, because that's going to be the quickest one out of the lot. There's a lot of competition with SUVs these days. Every manufacturer makes one. They're getting better and better every time a new model comes out. Um, and that's definitely the case with this new Kona. Uh, would I buy one? I always ask myself that question when I review a car. If I was in the market for one of these, I think I probably would. I love the amount of standard equipment on this base model. I probably have the N9 package just because I'm not a big fan of the sort of black plastic on the four wheel arches on the corners of the car. And I'd probably choose either the hybrid or the electric to power it. Um, I don't mind this 2 litre petrol, it just needs a bit more grunt to it. Uh, it's a little bit underpowered sometimes. It's great around the city, but if you want to overtake something, then um, yeah, you're sort of struggling a little bit. Um, I'd be keen to see what the electric one drives like. Um, I have got that booked in in a couple of months' time to drive that, so yeah, keen to see what that's like. But yeah, I think I'd, this would definitely be on my shopping list if I was looking for a small to medium sized SUV. It's got all the creature comforts you'd ever want. Um, but yeah, so I'd just add that N line pack and choice of engine, I reckon I'd be done. Now in terms of pricing for this new Kona, this base model that we're driving is $36,000 drive away. And although that's more expensive than the previous model Kona, it's comparable to other cars on the market, I actually think it's reasonable value for money. You can go up to the hybrid for another $4,000 on the same car, which I think a lot of people might do, because nowadays with the fuel costs, everyone's trying to save as much money as they can. You can add on things like the the endline package, you can get a premium model, you can get a premium model with a sunroof. If you add everything together and get the most expensive option before you get to the electric model, you're in the range of sort of the mid-50s. 
So you can get quite up there for a small car, but then you do get a lot for your money. So there's all the details then of this brand new second generation Hyundai Kona. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, give it a like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. If you've got any questions about this car, leave them below in the comments for me and I'll answer them for you as soon as I can. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again very soon.